it's you guys. Hey, welcome to Kid Life. Come on in here. I missed you guys. I haven't seen you in about a week. Yeah, I think it's, it's been a week. Well, anyway, come on in. I missed you guys. Let's pray. Hello, my Kid Life friends. Let's pray before we get started for today's service. Go ahead and bow your head and close your eyes. God, I thank you for my friends that are watching here today. I pray right now, Lord, that they learn something new about you today, God, that you love on them so much, God. We thank you for everything that you're doing in their lives and all that you're going to do. In your name we pray, amen. Oh, hey there, name's Todd. Bet you're wondering what I'm doing here. Figured you were. Last week we had varsity basketball tryouts and it didn't go very well. Yeah, as you can see, I didn't make the team. I'm not very good. So I decided to invest in a personal trainer and I went to Trainers R Us, but they were too expensive. So then I went to Craigslist, like literally my friend Craig who had a list of people that he recommended. So now I'm waiting on my friend Craig's mom's, cousin's, brother's, dog's trainer or something? Yep, that'd be me. My name's Tony, Tony the trainer. Sorry I was late. I was teaching Charlie how to roll over. Is Charlie a toddler? Does he not know how to roll over? Nah, Charlie's a cocker spaniel. <laughs> what? You're literally a dog trainer? How are you gonna teach me how to play basketball? Hey, you listen here. I have happened to have trained one of the most phenomenal basketball players of all time. Oh yeah? Who? Hmm. You ever heard of Air Bud? Are you kidding me? You mean a dog that was in a movie about playing basketball? That wasn't real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's as real as the hair on my toenails, okay? Now, are you ready to learn some lessons or what? I mean, if you think you can teach me. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm not the one that didn't make the team and had to hire a trainer. It wasn't my fault I didn't make the team. I tried to find my good luck charm and bring it to the tryouts, but I couldn't find it. What was your good luck charm? My lucky parrot. Your lucky parrot? Yeah, his name's Petey. Okay, well, Petey ain't here, so forget about it. All right, so what am I going to be learning today? I'm glad that you asked. I thought of some plays that I would like you to learn. Cool, what are they? Okay, the first play is called the turnip trick. First you go over here and you find yourself a moose. Doesn't have to be a big moose, but just a little moose, okay? You get on the moose's back and you're gonna grab him by the antlers and put the ball right there. What in right the world are you talking about? This doesn't make any sense. Okay, I see how it is. You're not gonna be able to follow my game plan. Come with me. So what exactly are we doing here? It's simple, shortstop. I'm here to teach you how to do an alley-oop. What? Yeah, that doesn't make any sense. You don't have to be in an alley to do an alley-oop. Oops. All this is ridiculous. Well, then let me teach you the pick and roll. Finally, something I can understand. Okay, so the pick and roll is when you distract the other player by picking the nose, and then you roll away with the ball and shoot it in the basket. Are you kidding me? This is getting way out of hand. You claim to be teaching me a new game plan, but none of this is making any sense. It's like that sometimes. Like what? Well, sometimes the game plan we think we should have is different than the game plan that God has for us. And not just in basketball, but also in life. Uh, I'm confused. Look, you think you know what you're doing with your life? You think you need to follow your game plan? No, 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 forget about it. You need to follow God's game plan. You need to follow what he wants for your life. Yeah, I see what you mean. Good, now the kids today are gonna learn about a pretty awesome promise that God makes to each of us. God's got good plans for your life. It's time for you to dive into God's game plan and learn all about it. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, I think so. Hey, did you know that Michael Jordan was afraid of muskrats? You know I gotta tell you what you gotta know. Tell you what you gotta know. You know I gotta tell you what you gotta know. Tell you what you gotta know. Hey kids, it's me, Callie from the Valley. And I'm like here to tell you like what you gotta know. I'm like so excited to start a brand new series called Game Plan. Today, we're like talking about how God has like totally cool plans for us. 
So every time today somebody asks you what you got to know, you tell them. I will follow God's amazing plan. People are always like, Callie, what are your plans? What are you going to do with your life? Like, where's Waldo? I'm like, first of all, Waldo's hat is like so last year. A grody. Second of all, I don't know what my plans are. I'm not like good enough to do totally awesome things with my life. But then God, he's like, girl, yes you are. Follow me and everything will change. It's like, okay God, you're right. No matter what I've done, if I follow you, you have an awesome plan for my life. Cause you like care about me. So every time today somebody asks you what you gotta know, you tell them. I will follow God's amazing plan. And that is what you gotta know. I'm Callie from the Valley saying TTYL. Hey kids, what time is it? Yay time! It's time for worship. Time for worship. What is the floss? I'm doing what you kids taught me what to do. I don't know how to do these fancy dances. It, anyway, it's time for worship.
Regina Teast, but nobody goes by Regina anymore, so you can just call me R. Artiste. Now, I'm just working on a painting right now, but I think I need a break. So I thought that you could help me with today's power verse. See, the problem is I sleepwalk at night. And last night, as I was painting the power verse, I started using pictures instead of words. So now I need you to help me figure out what it's supposed to say. Let's take a look at it. For eyeball. Oh no, I bet it's I. No, the blueprint hmm what could that word be <gasps> plans i have for you says the lord they are oh plans for thumbs up no that can't be it well what is that supposed to mean oh good and not for disaster to give you a ah. Oh? Is that a calendar? With the year 3000? Well, that's far into the future. <gasps> future! I bet that's it. And a hope. Jeremiah 29 11. That's it! Great job, boys and girls. Now, let's make sure that we don't forget it. So everyone stand up and say it with me on the count of three. One, two, three. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. Jeremiah 29, 11. Great job, everyone. You can all have a seat. Now, would you like to see what I've been painting today? <laughs> see, this morning I had something new for breakfast and I was inspired to paint because it was so beautiful. But I'm going to warn you, you should not try this for breakfast because I've had a tummy ache all day. Anyway, what I had for breakfast today was rainbow beans and rainbow milk. Doesn't it just look wonderful? But it's not, I promise, don't eat it. Anyway, that's my lovely painting of the day. Now thank you all again for your help today. I'll see you later, boys and girls. Bye-bye. Today's Bible story is found in the book of Luke, chapter 19. It's a story about a man named Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus was a tax collector, which means he took some of everyone's money and gave it to the Roman government. People didn't like Zacchaeus very much because he was known to be very dishonest. One day, Zacchaeus heard that Jesus was nearby teaching. He wanted to get a good look at this man he had heard about. He had heard all about how Jesus heals, loves and tells people all about God. When he arrived, he saw a huge crowd surrounding Jesus. But Zacchaeus had a little problem. He was very short. He couldn't see Jesus over all the people. So Zacchaeus had an idea. He found a tree that was nearby and began to climb it so he could get a better view of Jesus. Pretty smart idea, huh? Don't you love climbing trees? Well, while he was in the tree, Jesus saw him. Jesus called him by name. Zacchaeus, come on down from there. I must come to your house as a guest today. The religious people who were there couldn't believe that Jesus would actually go to Zacchaeus' house. They didn't like Zacchaeus at all because he was a tax collector. They saw Jesus at Zacchaeus' house and said, How could Jesus possibly hang out with that man? He's a big sinner. Jesus was not impressed with the religious people. They were supposed to be the ones sharing the love of God, yet they were treating Zacchaeus as if he didn't even matter. Jesus said, I have come to save lost people like Zacchaeus. He was teaching the religious people that if they really wanted to do God's will, they would show love to the people like Zacchaeus instead of ignoring them and treating them like they didn't even matter. In our lesson today, we're going to learn that no matter who we are and no matter what we've done, Jesus loves and cares about us, and he has good plans for us. Hey kids, we're starting a new series. We're talking about God's game plan. God has good plans for your life, and you're probably saying to yourself, Pastor Brandon, <laughs> don't you know, doesn't Jesus know what I've done wrong? I, I, I've sinned, I, I've took a cookie from the cookie jar, I've, I've, I've cheated at Monopoly, I'm a bad noodle. 
And you probably feel like Zacchaeus from our Bible story. Remember Zacchaeus? He was an outcast. Uh, nobody really liked Zacchaeus. Uh, people avoided him like the plague and stayed away from him because of all the things that he did. And he was a tax collector and he was a crooked tax collector. I mean, people don't like tax collectors in the beginning anyway, but he was a bad tax collector because he was trying to get a little, little change on the side and did not even have any remorse for doing it. He was a bad noodle. Now, I'm sure you probably thought the same thing I'm thinking. He was probably lonely. Uh, have you ever felt that way before? Like, no one in the world cared about you. No one wanted to be around you, avoided you, stayed away from you. I mean, have you ever felt that lonely? Guilty as charged, I've been there before. I felt like that. I felt like I was the only person in the world sometimes and that nobody wanted anything to do with me and I'm here to tell you some good news today that there's a difference to that story that you don't have to say to yourself that you feel like a loser that you feel like you're alone that you feel like nobody wants anything to do with you today we're going to learn the lesson Zacchaeus learned and the first thing I want you to know is that Jesus cares when nobody else will remember Zacchaeus was a loser nobody was I know it's not nice to say that in church I know but it's the Truth, in a sense, nobody wanted anything to do with Zacchaeus. Nobody cared about him. He felt all alone. He felt just so, so lonely. And he decided it was time to do something about it. So he heard Jesus, that was completely different than everybody else, was coming into town, and he decided to check him out. He wanted to know if he was the real deal and see what he was all about. So here's the thing. When he got to town... He was expecting a nice, warm welcome, but he wasn't. Even when he went to go see Jesus, the people around there treated him like dirt. They treated him badly. They thought he was a loser. And even then, in a town completely from not where from he's at, he felt lonely. After all that, he was just in the dumps. He felt bad. He was shorter than everyone else. Here's the thing. He was shorter than everyone else, so he couldn't see. So, this is what he did. He did something to find a way to see Jesus, and this is what he did. He ended up climbing a tree, a sycamore tree to be specific. It must have been tough to be Zacchaeus, but do you remember what happened next in our Bible story? Jesus walked straight through the crowd, right past everyone else, and went right up to the tree that Zacchaeus was in. Jesus noticed him. He looked up in the tree and he said, Zacchaeus, get down here. I'm going to your house. You know, it's like that old song that I always love singing. He, he, and here's the thing. He cared about Zacchaeus, and he cares about you. Jesus cares about you. It doesn't matter what everybody else might think about you. Jesus cares about you. Jesus loves you. He loves you no matter what. I've said that for years and years that Jesus loves people no matter what. Doesn't matter what you said, done, or going to do, or going to say. Jesus loves you. Now, you might be thinking, well, wait a second, I have done a lot of bad things. And I mean, I know I listed some things earlier that, you know, maybe you never really cheated at Monopoly. Maybe you never really took a cookie from the cookie jar. But maybe you've talked back to your parents. Maybe you've, for my older kids out there, I see you all, that maybe some of you have skipped class. Maybe you've said a few words that you were not supposed to say that are not in the good vocabulary. Maybe you have watched some things that are not good. Maybe you have done some things that aren't good. And you're thinking, well, um, this is worse than taking cookie from a cookie jar. I have sinned. This is bad. And there's something I need to tell you. It's good news. It's good news. I don't want you sitting here thinking that, you know, it's all bad news. No, it's good news. And it's this. No matter how bad you are, Jesus has a plan for you. Don't forget, Zacchaeus was a big time sinner. He ripped people off and took their money. Zacchaeus was so bad, the whole entire city. Now, listen, you have got to be pretty bad for the whole entire city to be like, that's the one we do not want. No, thank you. You have to be bad for the whole entire city to not like you but that's not where the story ended for Zacchaeus 
even though they didn't want to go nowhere near him, even though he was bad news, that was not the end of the story. Let me break it down here for a second. Maybe, just maybe, you might feel like Zacchaeus. Maybe you might feel like, it, like him. Let me use my little bag here. Nothing in my bag right now. But maybe you feel like Zacchaeus, and maybe, just maybe, you've done some bad things in your life, and you have sinned, and I mean sinned. You have done more than taken cookies from the cookie jar. You have called people names. You have, you have done more than cheated. You have stolen stuff. Maybe you've done bad things like that. Maybe you have been disrespectful. Maybe you fight with your brother, your sister, your parents, your relatives. Maybe, just maybe, you have done a few things that have just been a little bit over the line and just maybe you're thinking to yourself, Pastor Brandon, I am a bad noodle. And that you feel like you have gotten to the point that Jesus has closed the door and said, you are no longer allowed in here. I do not love you anymore. It's over. But I want to remind you of something. I want to remind you of what Jesus did for you and for me. The fact that he didn't close the door on us, the fact that he didn't say, I don't love you anymore. It's the fact of, it's completely opposite. He loves us so much that he was willing to die for us, that he opened the door for you and me to spend the rest of our lives with him and forever in heaven. He loves us so much that he was willing to sacrifice his own life so that you and I can be forgiven of our sins so we could be free and live a life with him forever. You see, what happens is that when you remember that and you remember all the things that Jesus has done for you, when you remember all that, everything has changed. And then in that moment, right there, in that moment, ooh, I almost hit myself in the face. I almost changed my, my uh, eye prescription there. <laughs> when, when you notice all that that has happened, this is what happens. Completely different story. Look at that guy, happy as a clam. Because he's been forgiven. He has been washed of his sins and he is reminded that he is not all those bad things that he did, said, thought, that he is well beyond that, that he is a child of God and that he is loved no matter what. It's important that you remember what Jesus did. My last point, when you follow his plan, everything changes. Everything changes. When you choose to live for Jesus and follow his plan for your life, everything changes. Your whole life changes. You become brand new. All of the sin and the bad things you once did are no longer a part of your life. You get a fresh start. You get to start back at the beginning and clean slate. Everything is clean. You get a do-over. Remember what happened to Zacchaeus. When Jesus saw him and showed him how much he cared about Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus decided to change his whole entire life and start doing what was right. He was a great example of how things can change when you decide to follow Jesus. And here's the thing, even though Zacchaeus was bad and no one cared about him, Jesus did. Jesus cared about him. Jesus loved him. Jesus had good plans for his life. And it's the same for you and for me. No matter who you are or what you've done, Jesus cares about you. He has good plans for your life. And most importantly, he loves you. There might be some of you out there today, you might feel like that. You might feel like, you know what? God doesn't love me. I've messed up. I've done some pretty bad things. I'm even talking to the parents right now that are listening too. This message is for you too. Don't think you're exempt. You're watching too. So this message is for you too. Some of you out there might be thinking, I have done horrible things. There is no way that this God that you're talking about loves me. No, that's a completely different story. He does love you. If he loves you enough, if he loved Zacchaeus enough to go to the tree, the very tree he was sitting in, up high so he could see him, if he cared enough to go through the entire crowd to get to Zacchaeus, he cares enough for you. He cares more than enough for you. He loves you. So let's pray. And my prayer today is that you just remember 
that he loves you no matter what. And that it's best to follow his plan. He's got good plans for you. No matter what you've done, he's got good plans for you. Don't think because of what you've done, you're out of the line for a blessing. No, no, he loves you. So do me a favor, bow your head, close your eyes. Come on, let's pray together. God, we thank you for the message in the story of Zacchaeus that even though we've messed up plenty of times, we've, we've done wrong, you still love us. You still care for us. You still got good stuff for us, good plans for us. Remind us of that this week as we, as we walk through this week. And we might walk through this week with guilt and shame and remembering all the bad things we've done. And, and we don't have to do that. We can remember that God loves us so much that when he washes us away of the sins and, and, and of all of that that we have done, we started anew. We started fresh. So God, thank you that we have a brand new beginning. We have a brand new start. And God, we thank you so much for loving us no matter what. We thank you for that. We love you, God. We give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. In your name we pray. Amen. God created everything in the universe, including you. You see, God loves you so much and wants to have a friendship with you. But there's a problem. We've all sinned. That means we've all done something wrong, every single one of us. And that sin separates us from God. But there's good news. You and I don't have to be separated anymore. Because of God's great love for us, He sent His only Son, Jesus, to die on the cross and come back to life for us so that we can be made right with Him. All we have to do is choose to make Jesus the leader of our life. How? It's as easy as A, B, C. A, admit. Admit what you've done wrong and tell God you don't want to sin anymore. B, believe. Believe that God sent Jesus to take the punishment for your sin. Trust that you are forgiven and that you are now right with God. C, confess. Confess to others that Jesus is the leader of your life and your best friend. Choose to make Jesus the leader of your life. Get to know Him and how much He loves you and make the choice to love Him back. Oh, it's time to go. You have to go. Oh, don't leave. You just got here. Oh, I've missed you guys already. Well, I guess you've got to go on and get, go on and get. You have yourself a good day now. You stay safe. Wash those hands. Stay blessed. I love y'all. I'll see you next time. I mean, you don't have to leave right away, do you? I mean, okay, go ahead. Go on. Go on. I'll see you next time. <laughs> you sure you don't want to stay? Oh, okay. All right. Have a good day. <laughs> take, take care.